Oral Braun joins me now from Toronto, Canada. He's a professor of international relations and political science at the University of Toronto. Great to see you, Professor. Hello. Well, as we mentioned, the EU has maintained a strong trade relationship with China. Talk to us about the motivation behind that in recent years, despite pressure from other countries. Indeed, there is a very strong relationship. China, by 2020, became the largest trading partner of the EU, surpassing the United States. Total trade in that year amounted to about $650 billion. Compare that to the trade with Russia, which is only about $140, $145 billion. But right now, we have to look at the big picture. And the big picture is that there are sanctions against Russia. And uh, these occupy a primary place in what the EU and United States are collectively doing to deal with uh, Russian aggression and the atrocities that uh, have been so widely documented by just about every single news organization that Russia is committing. And so the EU and the United States want to make sure that these sanctions work, that Russia does not find a way to evade sanctions. So even though China is not targeted directly, uh, it may be subject to collateral damage that uh, uh, it cannot help Russia evade those sanctions, because if it tries, then Chinese companies could could suffer. And this is why you see uh, not just EU companies and American companies getting out of Russia, but even in the case of uh, India, which has not condemned Russian actions and wants to maintain good relations with uh, Russia, key companies, Tata, Infosys, these are giant companies. They're getting out of Russia. Alongside that, you know, the conflict in Ukraine, the political aspect that you talk uh, about this, let's look at what else is impacting this relationship. When you consider the supply chain, the pandemic slowing things down, and, uh, you, you know, everything else that's happening, how do they maintain uh, the economic part of this? As you're suggesting, there's a kind of constellation of factors that have complicated global trade. COVID has been one of them. Supply chain problems have been another. But the issue with Ukraine is a really major one, and I think that has to be understood by all significant countries in, in, in the world, how much of an impact it has had. Vladimir Putin had very badly miscalculated. He had gone in, he has engaged in this massive aggression and the atrocities under the assumption that it would be a quick victory and that he could overturn the world order, uh, uh, at least in Europe, that prevailed after the Cold War. He has failed in that, and instead he has awoken a giant, NATO. And in some ways he has also awoken the EU. And so now you have a massive, a massive reaction. Uh, much of the world has had its conscience uh, uh, really offended by what has been happening. So the measures all over the place, and this adds a layer that is absolutely crucial. That is the big picture. And this is what a country like China has to recognize, that it may not be targeted directly, but it will be affected indirectly because of what is happening on the ground, because of how sanctions work and the kind of uh, pain that the EU countries have been willing to take on in order to punish, punish Russia. And they're not going to have that uh, sustained sacrifice and then allow somehow Russia to find other ways around uh, these uh, very important steps that have been taken in the EU. So, in a sense, we have to look back at key lessons in history. One of the key lessons in history has been that in any kind of partnership or some kind of friendship, it is absolutely essential to understand that you do not let a weak, a feckless, or an irresponsible partner make decisions for you. It tends to end badly. Russia is a poor bet and becoming a worse bet by the day. And so when we see some of the tensions that are taking place in relations with China, uh, in Europe, 
countries that have had very good relations in the past with China and probably would like to maintain those relations, we need to appreciate just how grave the impact of Russian actions have been and how this kind of notion that you can have a friendship without limits is running up against limits.